um, definition of MBDA strategic alignment, the vision. MBDA is a champion for minority business enterprises. Mission. Our mission is to promote the growth of 11 million minority business enterprises. Our strategy. Our strategy is to increase the number of MBEs and their gross revenues. Again, to learn a little bit more about MBDA, please feel free to visit our website at www.mbda.gov. Before I get into the program objectives, after each section, we will have a answer, a question and answer session after each topic. Please note that the questions will be minimum. I only will be taking a minimum of maybe three questions. And of course, these questions will be posted to our website under our frequently asked questions within the next few business days. A little bit about MBDA. MBDA is the Minority Business Development Agency, and we are a bureau of the U.S. Department of Commerce. MBDA has developed programs to support entrepreneurship for undergraduate students at eligible institutions of higher education. So again, I do want to reiterate, I would love for you to have the notice of funding opportunity out in front of you so you can read along with me, as I will not be reading verbatim from the published notice of funding opportunity announcement, but I will be highlighting some very important factors. Through this broad agency announcement, MBDA will provide funding for entrepreneurship programs, including curricular courses, seminars, and replica products and tools that teach each student how to develop business and commercialize project products and services in the domestic and global marketplace. Program objective continue. MBDA is soliciting applications from eligible institutions to establish six projects as described and outlined in this broad agency announcement. MBDA anticipates awarding a total of approximately 1.8 million for these six projects. Please outline your BAA, which is the broad agency announcement, your application is to lay the foundation for future generation of entrepreneurial leaders and innovators that will help strengthen U.S. global competitiveness. Ms. Grimsley, I want to take a pause at this time to see if we have any questions. There are no questions. Thank you. Thank you. Moving along in the program to program priorities. While growth rates and entrepreneurship are increasing compared to rates of participation in the labor market, there are systematic challenges for MBEs entrepreneurs. MBDA recognizes those challenges as well as the important role of historical black colleges and universities, Hispanic serving institutions, tribal colleges and universities, Alaska native serving institutions, and native Hawaiian serving institutions as leading the nation in producing minority business leaders and entrepreneurs. These projects shall prioritize the entrepreneur training and business preparation of undergraduates and the unique challenges faced by MBE entrepreneurs through the expansion of entrepreneurial curriculum offered by HBCUs, HSIs, TCUs, ANSIs, in NHSIs. Each applicant must propose a project that clearly defines a plan for the entrepreneurial program to be developed and taught and delivered to the students. The following performance metrics must be outlined in your submitted application. The number of entrepreneurship classes taught, the number of students impacted, the number of products, service, and innovations created, the number of strategic partners, and the number of business plans. Ms. Grimsley, do we have any questions? 
Yes, Nikita. Yes, Nikita. One question that we have says, is the award date the date that the awards are now are announced or the date that the funding begins? So the, uh, the anticipated award date is September 1, 2022, which will be the start of the period of performance for the award. Thank you. Another question um, is asking just for a clarification on the amount of the award per year. The amount of the award per year is 3711 per year. And I will get to that topic after the next slide when we go in, into award information. Thank you. And one last question. Is the plan including entrepreneurship courses that may already be established at the university or would this be in addition to what is already provided? In addition to what's being provided. OK, thank you, Nikita. You're welcome. Thank you. Program authority. MBDA is operating under the statutory statutory authority for this program is the Minority Business Development Act 15 USC 9501-9598, specifically 9543. Award information. MBDA expects to expend approximately 1.8 million in fiscal year 2022 for financial assistance awards under this BAA. The period of performance for this award is a two year term, but funded one year at a time. MBDA anticipates making six awards under this announcement. The funding amount for each award, as just stated in the question asked, is approximately 300,711. MBDA expects to make at least one award in each of the following types of institutions. HBCUs, HSI, TCU, NHSI, and ANSI. MBDA expects to issue these awards again for two years. The start date is October 1, 2022 through September 30 of 2024. I want to reiterate the start date for this program is October 1, 2022 through September 30 of 2024, not September 1. These awards will start October 1, 2022. Selected applicants under this announcement will receive funding in the mechanism of a grant. Eligibility information. Eligible applicants include the following institutions of higher education. HBCUs, HSIs, TCUs, NHSIs, and ANSIs. Those are historical black colleges and universities, Hispanic serving institutions, tribal colleges and universities, and Alaskan native serving institutions. Please note that these projects must be located in the United States and or any US territory. The territories are outlined in your printed notice of funding opportunity announcement. MBDA is not authorized to provide awards to individuals under this broad agency announcement. Cost sharing and or matching, some refer to it, is not required. Ms. Grimsley, do we have any questions before moving along? Yes, Ms. Chambers, we do. Uh, one question as, is there G? PRA for this award. This is base metrics to evaluate achievements. So GIPRA. Uh, so I'm going to we, I'm going to defer answering that question. That question will be answered in the published frequently asked questions, which will be published to our website in the next couple business days. Thank you. To clarify, is the September 1 date when awards will be announced and then the funding will begin on October 1st? Can you just clarify that one more time? No, let me clarify that. 
The award date for this funding opportunity announcement is October 1, 2022. The start date of the award is October 1, 2022, not September. All right, Ms. Um, Chambers, one other question. Even though there is no match requirement, will a match comp contribution make the application more competitive? Non-federal cost share is not required. However, it is up to the applicant. If you submit non-federal cost share, but please note, if you submit non-federal cost share in your application, you must meet that non-federal cost share requirement. Thank you, Ms. Chambers. We can continue. Thank you. Application and submission information. I want to reiterate, MBDA does not accept emailed and or mail applications. Applications are only accepted via grants.gov, and that website is www.grants.gov. Please note that MBDA has some helpful tools on our website at www.mbda.gov that will assist you in completing and submitting a successful application. The website, again, for you to submit your application is www.grants.gov. MBDA, our website, has some helpful information and tools that can assist you in completing a successful application. And our website is www mbda.gov. The next session I want to discuss is content and form of the application. Just general requirements which are required for a complete application. You must include the following. A title page, a table of contents, the applicant narrative, supporting documentation, the standard forms, and a detailed budget narrative as well as you must comply with the format requirements. Details are outlined in the printed Notice of Funding Opportunity Announcement under this section. As we all know, SAM, the Unique Entity Identifier and System for Award Management, that website is www.sam.gov. In order for you to receive federal funding, from MBDA, you must have an active SAM account. I would like to encourage each and every one of you to check your SAM account to make sure that it is valid and that it does not need to be updated. That website for SAM is www.sam.gov. If your organization does not have a SAM account, I encourage you to go in to register for a SAM account. Please ensure that you maintain an active SAM registration with all of your current information. I just want to reiterate the website is www.sam.gov. And I also want to reiterate that MBDA may not make a federal award to an applicant without following the required SAM requirements. Submission dates and time is very important. All proposals must be received on or before May 25th, 2022 at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time. I can't stress that enough. It's very, very important. I encourage you to apply early versus waiting to the last minute or the day of. And you have to submit your applications through grants.gov. The electronic submission will receive a date and a time stamp and will be processed after it's fully loaded. Applicants, you should wait or maybe anticipate 48 hours before receiving a confirmation from grants.gov. Please note that MBDA does not house that system. That is a system for the from the Department of Health and Human Services. Funding restrictions. This is a very, very important piece 
of the puzzle as well. If you and your organization are requesting to charge indirect calls to the grant, please submit a copy of your most current and signed indirect cost rate approved from a negotiated COGSNIT federal agency. It is very important that you submit this documentation with your application. Indirect costs proposed under this award must be clearly identified as a separate budget line on your SF-424A, as well as your detailed budget narrative. Ms. Grimsley, I want to pause to see if we have any questions. Yes, we do. The first question is, are there, is there a list of universities that got their proposals previously approved? We do have um, four minority colleges and university grants, and it is posted to our website. Thank you. Uh, this be, is this BAA just for undergrads or may we consider graduate students also? I would defer you to read the review, the funding of the funding opportunity announcement in detail, and it specifically lays out who's eligible and who you should serve. Thank you. The next question, are sub awards permitted? The prime grantee can have a sub award, a sub awardee, and that is also included on your SF-424 and is a budgetary um, line item. Thank you, Ms. Chambers. There are no other questions at this time. Thank you. Other submission requirements. So it takes time to complete and upload an application to grants.gov. And as I previously stated, I encourage you all to apply early rather than late to ensure that your complete award package is submitted through grants.gov. If you are new to this process and you don't have a grants.gov registration, I highly encourage you at the conclusion of this pre-application conference to register your organization with www.grants.gov. If you already have a grants.gov account, I would encourage you to validate and make sure that the account is validated and no required information is needed. Again, electronic submissions, MBDA only accept award application packages via the electronic system grants.gov. Returning grants.gov users, you don't have to re-register, but I highly encourage that you ensure that your SAM account is updated as well as your grants.gov account. Those websites again, SAM, www.sam.gov, grants.gov, www.grants.gov, and MBDA's website is www.mbda.gov. The application review information. Evaluation criteria, your application will be rated and reviewed by three merit reviewers. A total of 100 maximum point is what you can achieve in this proposal. The impact of your proposed project will be worth 40 points. The applicant capability is worth 25 points. Your applicant budget is worth 35 points, which includes your budget narrative, and that's a total points of 100. All applications must adhere to the submission guidelines. I'm going to repeat that. All applications must adhere to the submission guidelines. The mandatory items are your title page, failure to adhere, a five point deduction, the table of contents, failure to adhere, five point deduction, applicant narrative, failure to adhere, is disqualification of your application, as well as your budget narrative and all required forms. If you do not submit those forms, your application will be disqualified. All project proposals will be evaluated and will be selected 
based on the level at which the proposal addresses the evaluation criteria above at any less points deducted for a failure of not submitting a complete application with the required mandatory documents. Application review information continues. The review and selection process, which is very important. Your application will undergo uh, initial screening. Once the applications are submitted to grants.gov, they then download into the Departments of Commerce electronic grant system that we use, which is Grants Online. A merit review panel will happen next. That's the next phase of the grant, where there will be at least three merit reviewers, three individuals, all of whom can be a combination of full-time federal employees and or non-federal civilians. The panel chair will be an assigned program analyst out of the Grants Management Division within the Minority Business Development Agency. Each reviewer will evaluate and provide individual scores for each proposal based on the criteria that's set out in the application review. Selecting factors. Proposals deemed meritorious would be passed to the selection review panel composed of no more than five federal employees. The anticipated announcement and award dates. The anticipated start date of this award is October 1, 2022. Ms. Grimsley, before moving to the next section, are there any questions? Yes, we have two questions. Uh, do biographies or resumes for major participants count against the page limit? They do not count against the page limit, but we will only need a resume for the organization operator as well as the project director if you have a potential project director in mind that will manage the project. Thank you. The next question is asking about um, existing courses and new courses. They want to know, can we mix new and previous courses to create a new undergrad entrepreneurship program? That question will be answered in the frequently asked questions that will be posted to MBDA's website within the next couple business days. Thank you. And the last question um, goes back to the funding. Um, just again, another clarification. Um, is it 300, 000, 300, 000, 7, 300K per year, or is it divided into two years for 150K per year? The funding amount is 300, 711 per year per applicant. Thank you, Ms. Chambers. There are no other questions. Thank you, and I would like to thank everyone who took the time out to ask a question. Reporting. The project is required to provide the following reports, and it is very imperative that you complete these reports if you are the successful applicant. The financial reports. The financial reports are reports that will be submitted via the Department of Commerce's electronic grant system, which is the Grants Online system, on a semi annual and an annual basis. Semi annual the first six months, year in the entire 12 months. The first semi-annual financial report will be due 30 days after the initial award period. The final report is due and the final report is the close of the entire project. This two year project will be due 120 days after the expiration of the award. Your progress reports. Your progress reports will be submitted via the Department of Commerce's Grants Online system on a semi-annual and an annual basis as well. Please note, failure to submit these reports in a timely manner may result in MBDA's award enforcement and or delay access to federal funding. When submitting your financial reports, you will work closely with the NOAA Grants Management Division, who is the granting agency for the Department of Commerce. 
For your progress reporting, you will work closely with myself, Nikita Chambers, the program manager, and or the assigned program analyst who will be assigned to the project, overseeing, providing oversight and monitoring of your project. Your agency contact is me. I am Nikita Chambers, the MBDA program manager. I can be reached via email at nchambers at mbda.gov. I can be reached via phone 202-482-0065. Other very important information. This is the first of many pre-application conferences. We will host a series of informational sessions. The next one will be held May the 12th, following May the 19th. You all are registered, so you all will receive a link for the remainder of the conferences. So I just want to highlight some other important information. Successful applicants, there will be a post-award conference held. The National Minority Enterprise Development Week conference is a conference that MBDA puts on and will be you will be receiving further information if you are the successful applicant. The MBDA National Training Conference. That's an annual training that we host to ensure that each grantee is trained up in compliance and in terms and condition and in, in compliance with the terms and conditions of the award. The MBDA team will work closely with you during that national training conference and will provide guidance and direct information. The NOAA Grants Management Workshop is hosted by the NOAA Grants Management Division. Collaboration with MBDA. Not just MBDA headquarters, but collaborating with other equities that MBDA has. We have a nationwide, nationwide network of business centers. We have some specialty projects as well. Past performance and non-compliance with award provisions, limitation of liability, audit costs, right to use information, and a Freedom of Information Act disclosure. Ms. Grimsley, I wanna open it up. Do you have any additional questions for me? Yes, Ms. Chambers, we have, <clears throat> excuse me, we have quite a few questions here in the chat. Um, the first question, can you explain the pre-award cost that would be eligible for funding? Pre-award cost is, will be eligible for the successful applicant if the successful applicant has started any work on the award and or if the award is awarded after October 1. Thank you. The next question, in the budget section, should we consider budget for two years and the justification? Yes, you should submit a complete award package, which includes a budget for year one and a detailed budget narrative, as well as a detailed budget for year two and a detailed budget narrative. Thank you. Next question, is there only salary allowed for the project director? Can the project include administrative support administrative support meaning staff you can have business consultants and administ administrative assistance um, we do not give advice and or instructions or guidelines how to propose what you propose in your budget and or your budget narrative Next question, can we reapply using our previous application from last year after addressing the reviewers comments? If your application from last year aligned with the notice of funding opportunity announcement, that decision is up to you. MBDA cannot guide and or direct you to use an application that was submitted in the past. Will the pre-application teleconferences on the 12th and the 19th include the same content that was delivered today? Some of the same content, each section will go into a little more deeper dive. So it's broken out into different sections. But I would like to encourage each applicant who registered 
for the pre-application conference and or intends to apply, participate in all of the pre-application conferences. Thank you. And for those of you that are putting your emails into the chat, I will make sure that you are added to uh, the registration for this. And then the last question, the time gap between the RFP announcement versus submission deadline is quite narrow. Is there any way to extend the deadline for another month? At this time, no. Thank you, Ms. Chambers. It, there, it doesn't look like there are any further questions. Thank you, thank you, thank you. On behalf of the Acting National Director, Miguel Estian of the Minority Business Development Agency, we would like to thank you for your participation in today's pre-application conference. We wish you good luck and much success. Again, let me just reiterate, MVDA does not accept paper applications. Your applications must be submitted through grants.gov, which is www.grants.gov. Your SAM registration, that website is www.sam.gov. And for helpful information tools, MVDA does have some presentations on our website which is www.mbda.gov. Good luck. Ms. Chambers, we did have one other question. Someone did ask um, where can grant outcomes be found or examples of the previous programs? Uh, we don't. Unfortunately, MBDA does not post grant outcomes. Okay, thank you. That concludes the questions. Thank you. Thank you all for joining and have a wonderful afternoon.